Yeah. Yo, you already know what it is. It's your boy and off of the streets. Welcome to the and off of the streets podcast. We got a dope lyricist, dope artist from Toronto in the building, man. Yo, let them know, let them know your name, let them know where you're from, man. What's up? Right, Joey Brick, guys. Don't play around. Joey Brick, I'm from the east downtown area of Toronto. Like you said, a lyricist. I won the 2020 lyricist of the year. If you don't know why, you go hit that link in the bio and the music speaks for itself. Okay, okay. Say it less, say it less, man. What's popping, man? How you been, man? How you doing, brother? Good, brother. I'm good. I just got off the tour run. We just announced another tour run. Okay, okay, okay. And we like we've been keeping it a low, but we have another tour run in April and May. Me and me and my brother Jay Young that I be doing the music with. So Oh, who's Jay Young? I see you doing a lot of collaboration. Yeah, yo, everybody shout out Jay Young, man. Jay's, yo, Jay is a hardworking man, eh? I'll be real, like, this past month, Brickle was 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 in a dark space. If it wasn't for my brother Jay, bro, like, Jay really held down the business. Jay's a businessman. He held down the business the whole time when I couldn't. So shout out Jay, bro. That's my brother for real. Like your actual brother or was like your... Nah, everybody thinks that. Everybody thinks that. But nah, that's just like Brody, you know? Yeah, we yeah. actually knew each other through the, the the weed scene. Like we were like we're cannabis guys, so we knew each other from that industry, and we linked up at a show. And like, Are you rapping? Oh, you rapping now? So it's like okay, okay, you know, like, right? You know? Okay, dope, dope, dope. How long you been doing this music thing for? Like, like let the people know. Like, how long you been professionally? Like going to the studio and paying for beats, paying directors, and really investing into my craft. Yeah. We're on the sixth year, so it's been five years. We're on the sixth year of really being a professional artist. Music on the platforms. All that type of stuff, right? Okay, okay. So you doing you've been doing it for six years. Do you have a plan on how many years you plan on doing it more, or do you give yourself like a timeline and a, a deadline? You like you know I what? Used I'm to five more years. Like I used to. For? Uh-huh. I used to sit there and I gave myself four years. Mm-hmm. I said, if I don't see any sort of mm-hmm. like a return in these investments in four years, like we'll chalk it up as just a hobby and a, a fun time, like you know, mm-hmm. but five years like you know i've won awards the double xl shit a lot of blog placements like even when i got off stage from the tony ayo shit i had a guy pull me aside and he was like yo bro to like i wear my sunglasses in all the spots and he said he's like i'm glad i had them on tonight because your song choked me up your shit made like so to me it's like i don't have an end game if i know that's what my music does for people right i just feel like i'm doing my purpose and until the lord decides like yo your purpose to serve i'm, I'm gonna be doing this but like I do obviously want to keep doing music to the point. It's like, well, I'm not just a rapper now. It's like, okay, I own this business. I own a studio. Okay, okay. Dabble back. We're going to get back into acting and shit like that. Right. So I don't have a, I don't have an end game, but okay. definitely want to see more out of the music, so to speak. So you play, so you kind of, you kind of using this music as a catalyst to do other things. So you play on, yeah. on like you said, opening a recording studio, if you plan on doing like starting a record label. So you plan on doing other things besides just doing music then? In the meantime, you know, but the music is the passion. Like I didn't come in the game, like I want to be the guy. I never came in the game being like, I want to be lit. I was just like, yo, I got these bars I want to just spit. And then my boy Sticky, who's my engineer, he's like, you bring your ass over here to the studio. You start, because I was just doing freestyle videos. I was on YouTube doing little acapellas. And then people from my ends were catching on. And they're like, yo, you're nice. If you got bars, you need to learn how to flow that shit. And Sticky, mm-hmm. who I call like my RZA, my Dr. Dre, our fucking sorcerer, he taught me to eat. He helped me be the artist in the way I am, you know? Like the bars were there, but the he was my master to teach me how to flow and hit that beat and shit. So shout out Sticky Jack too, bro. If you guys aren't in tune, you got to check his music too. Like, Dope, dope, dope. Like you were saying, you just came off the Tony Yeo tour. Like let the people know how it was just... Literally just opened up for Tony Ayo. Like, I'm sure Tony Ayo was one of I was face to face with his cameras, rapping for Yeo. I was rapping, rapping, and then another artist handed him back his phone and he stopped. And he even stopped. He's like, Yo, you keep spitting, bro. I would never disrespect the artist, keep rapping. And he fucks with Canada. Let me tell you, Tony Ayo's a very humble guy. Mm-hmm. Shout out Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson's a very humble, dope That's artist, crazy. very smart mm-hmm. businessman. So shout out them, man. It was a great time. Like, Peter, bro love like love like peter bro the way they treated us when we got off stage was like you'd swear i was part of the unit like they, the love in peter bro is different like it's dope that's dope yeah. that's dope shout out to peter jackson for real and tony yayo for like putting this whole situation together you know what i mean so it's like how, how did like i said how did this feel i'm sure tony yayo g unit 50 cent was one of your influences from back in the day so I, how did it feel to meet one of your influences like in, in person 
it just showed me like manifest yo see like it's sitting right here on the table just because i haven't really i haven't really even been to the crib so i was digging through shit to take with me right like little like i have i had a picture of my homegirl who passed and i wanted to take the picture of me just kind of like some good i'm a sentimental man so i was like good luck when i'm digging through my box of like heartfelt belongings at the bottom bro the fucking double xlg unit magazine that's crazy so to me it just kind of felt like did you get that sign though? Did you get that sign? I didn't because I was still, I was spitting my bars. I was like, ah. fuck the magazine. Fuck. I have bro, I have a copy of um Beg for Mercy signed by 50. I met 50 when I was a youth, like in my in my ends, bro. So that's crazy. What do you mean you get no, you, did you take a picture at least? A picture of videos? Bro, I I had enough time to spit them the bars. Man's I was with were so like they were starstruck, they didn't even record this shit, but Fucking nah, bro. The, the, the security was rushing him because we caught him right before he's about to go to meet and greet. And so they were even trying to pull him. And he's like, nah, give me a minute. Like, I want to hear this. Give me a minute. So I was like, okay. I took what I got from it. You know what I mean? But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, say less, say less. At least you got it. It just taught me, though, like, back to what I was saying. Like, it just showed me, like, doing the show, being in front of an artist that, like, I like said, grew up listening to is like, oh, manifestation's real as long as you work for it. That's facts. As long as you, 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 you do your low. Like you said, he had like a little interaction with him. You did just you spit for him, you know. That that's gonna stay with you for the rest of your life. You know, you're gonna remember you spit for Tony Yeo. You can't, you can't take that away from you. You know what I mean? Hundred no, percent. But what got you into rap music though? Like, like it was just something like for me with rap. The rap shit was like my bad. My parents are they were seventeen when I when I when they had me right. So it was like. My pops was from his ends. My mom's was from their ends. And it's like, that's what was the music was. It was just, they were already listening to rap. Or my mom's was heavy with the R&B. So I came out the womb just listening to that shit. I didn't have to go find it in a sense, right? So I loved it. Like when people ask me what makes you happy, I hear people rhyme certain words. Like I loved that shit since I was young. So the music just found me. And I mean, like, I'm my earliest memory was like grade three. I remember writing like my first shit. And it was okay. like, so like an Eminem beat, of course, you know? And I just remember mm -hmm. writing that shit. And I was like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Yes, say less. Since you're talking about writing, so, like, what's the process? Like, how do you put your words, like, to paper? Like, what's your creative process like? Hmm. So there's a, it's, it, it varies from a lot of ways, right? Like, say if I have the rhyme scheme, I just will sit there and I'll sit with a piece of paper and just fucking for as until I can't bend it no more, bend that rhyme scheme. Right. And then I treat it like a puzzle. And that's if I'm just kind of building bars, but when I'm writing a song, I treat it like an essay. I didn't really, I didn't fuck with school much. Like I wasn't a school kid, but I did like English class because it's words. So I treat a song just like if you know how to write an essay, yeah, like yeah. your hook is your thesis statement. So you got to start, your essay or your song with this thing and every paragraph, which is now your verse, you got to keep going back and touching on that thesis statement. Yeah. That's kind of how I learned how to write a song. I didn't know how to count bars though for a minute. Like I just would keep going and everyone's like, chill out like too many syllables. But once I got it, I got it. But yeah, that's, the, that's the process there. Either if I'm writing a song, I have my hook, the paragraphs, I just keep coming back to that, that hook and make sure. Cause like, you don't want to be an artist that has a song about your hooks about money. And then your whole verses are about fucking cars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's just make sure, like, my advice to anybody, if, you, if you're going to follow this, just make sure that that hook, that thesis statement is what you go back to. And like I said, when it comes to just writing bars, I'll think of, like, I'm pretty sure I was, I was showing the guys at, at our cook up this. Like, I'd be walking down the street and I'll see a car that says, like, hybrid. Like, so I just take that word, okay, hybrid. I'm not going to spin it as a car. I'm going to spin it like weed. So my, my bar was indica sativas, course, all the hybrids. I boogie with some dons. You would swear I was from hybrid. Okay, okay. And I just kept, okay, hybrid. What's after, like, just bend that fucking rhyme scheme until it can't be no more, right? Okay, sell us, sell us. Okay, that's dope. That's 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 a good way to go about it. But, like, since you feel like you're, like, a lyricist, you're on the lyrical, because I feel like right now hip-hop, hip-hop music and things like that, and not really, like, I don't see them really focuses on the bars. You Do you find that bars are dead, or do you think, like, bars are going to make a comeback? I think in the long run it will make a comeback, but speaking like today, yeah. it's not dead. It's just a hard market to find. It's a hard market to tap in. Thank God we have guys like Griselda, mm -hmm. Benny, and all those guys. Like they're still spitting, so it makes Dave East, um, Don Q, like all those guys. They they're still spitting with that little new shit. So it gives guys like me hope. Where it's like, oh no, it'll come back. The L O X and D block, or sorry, the the D block dip set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. showed me right there that give it five years give it yeah. some years 
hip hop, that style of it is going to come back, right? Okay, facts, facts. But like yourself, like you said, you're a lyricist. Do you find that sometimes when you go in the studio, you're not trying to be too l- lyrical or you're trying to make a hit? Do you, or, how's your mindset when you go into the studio? Like when you're writing a song, do you trying to make a hit or are you just trying to go straight lyrical with it? It just, there's times where I've sat with a beat and I'm like, I'm going to make this a hit. Like, I'm going to make sure we catch it. But it's just really like when I hear a beat, I, I this might sound bad to say, but I never sit there and think like, this is going to be the one I'm going to do. do, do. I, I just hear the beat and I do what I do. And then I'm like, okay. Then I decide, is this a single or is this, is this for a project? And that's my problem is I'm a, I call it a project artist. I like dropping albums. This is not old school shit. Right. So yeah. now I sit there and I think like, yo, let's make a hit. But that's not what comes out sometimes. I can hear a beat and be like, all right, I'm going to be bouncy and, and yeah, melodic. Yeah, yeah. And then next thing you know, I'm somehow still spitting a 16 with bars. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Like, But like when you go, but do you have like a, when you make music, do you make music? Do you go in there? You know what? I'm going to make music for the fans that like bars and lyrical lyrics. Do you go like making songs for the club or people that smoke weed? What do you, who do you make music for? Like who, who's your idea? Like, Target. I switch it up. I, I yeah. switch it up because I could like point out songs where I'm like, yo, I made this song for like women. Like this is not a song for the men to listen to. This is a woman song. Okay. Then I got like straight anthems for the weed smokers. Like as soon as this shit comes on, you better light up. Then I got shit for like the streets, the ends, you know, the people that are are dealing with shit. And then like a lot of my shit, I don't want to say it's like pain music, but a lot of it's just real life experiences. So I feel like in a sense, like you could throw on like my last album and you could find something to connect. That's what I do. That's my job is I want you to listen to my music and I want to bring you into my world for X amount of time you're listening to my shit. But when you leave, I want you to still feel it in your world, so to speak. You know what I mean? Okay. okay. So I like to tap into all markets. I got to work better on the club bangers. Like I, I, I can get litty, but I haven't got that formula yet to, you know. Your facts, facts. Because really, truly, when you think about it, if you look, even if you look at the Griselda's, uh, anybody that's kind of like a lyrical artist, I, once you get a hit, then you then you get them in like even, yeah, even number one you're Kendrick good. Lamar even you're Kendrick good. Lamar Kendrick Lamar is a lyrical artist but mm-hmm. like the way he got people he got one hit we got a hit people was really rocking with then people start listening to all his lyrical shit because yeah. I feel like it's it's a hit that most artists even if you could be lyrical you could be a drill rapper or not as long as you don't have a hit it's kind of hard to kind of grab the crowd to listen to you even Tony Yayo. Tony Ayo has to get G, had to get a, a hit from 50 Cent. He got a hit and everybody was bobbing with him. Who does so seductive drops? Boom, you see drop. everybody's moving. It's like it. It's true. So it's like, it's, a, it's like it really takes one song. But when you like start to break down a song and what will really get the song really like catchy, it's the hook. All it really takes is one hook yeah. or one word that really get people bobbed. You know, bopping their head, and they be, most people remember that little hook that how it make them feel. Because even if you're looking at I, I Spice, nobody knows the lyrics of the song, but they know you know the first really, sentence. That's it. The only part. Song, <laughs> the only song. The only part they know in the song. You thought I was feeling you. That's it. <laughs> they don't know the lyrics. Nobody knows the lyrics to that song, bro. Nah, <laughs> you can put a gun to me and say, "Sing another bar." I'm like, "Oh, I'm, <laughs> done. I'm, done. <laughs> like, I'm done." Like, <laughs> yo, so really, really, truly, when you think about it, it's like as much you could be lyrical, you could be a lyricist. Sometimes you just gotta like dumb it down in the hook. It's the hook that I really get them hooked. That's why it's called a hook. Hundred percent, hundred percent, and that's something I had to. I'm now learning five years later. It's like, chill out, bro. Like, you you got, you don't got to prove it no more. They know you can spit. Start proving you can make them move. You can, you can make them move. Once you make them move with the hook, you make them move with the beat. Bro, because as much you could you could be lyrical as fuck, but nobody's really going to remember the lyrics unless they really unless they really sit down, unless they're like one of your biggest fans and they're, they're going to know all the lyrics. But most times people just know the hook. They might know one, two words. And after the hook, then after that, they, 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 they good. They, they just jiggy. And I say they keep it moving. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so I would definitely tell you to focus on like, yeah, get the hook. Even if you can make the hook, get somebody else that can make the hook and put them, put them on the song. But yeah. So another question I want to ask you, like what strength do you feel like that you have, that you believe that you have that make you stand out? like from other like artists in the city or from other artists like in the world pretty much i feel like obviously definitely the bars that and i think it's it's just like 
me as a performer, like, I feel like, I don't know, like maybe I'm, I'm cocky or confident, whatever you want to call it, conceited, it, but like, I feel like I, see, I watch artists and there's only a group of us that have this certain energy. There's yeah. only a group of us that have that confidence when you walk up, like as bad as it sounds, like when I went to Tony Ayo, I didn't go there with the thought of I'm opening up for Tony Ayo. I walked in that, that room and on that stage, like you guys are here to see Joey Brick and Jay Young. Okay, facts. But that's how right? you have to, that's how you you have have to, to have that. So I feel like the confidence that, the confidence and the fact that I just believe so much in my craft and what I'm doing and what I, I lane, I know I could play. I just think that stands out the most. Cause you could be in a room of people and you can look around and you can know like he's shaky, he's going to crumble. And it's not even about like, Oh, being tough. It's about your artistry, about your craft. Like, right. Stop, stop, stop. And I can look at a person, talk to them for 30 minutes, play five of their songs and realize you're not here. Cause it's passion. You're lit right now. And you love yeah. it. And yeah. live it up. I could salute it, but I know like, fall back let the passion take his, his drive like that'll make it stand out more i feel like that's what it is that's the best way to say it is i feel like there's not a lot of rappers as passionate as yeah. i and others may be so i feel like that makes me kind of stand out like yeah i could definitely tell you're very passionate about you, you about your music especially your lyrics your, your wordplay you, you're super passionate about that and like i said like we were talking about another you could be really passionate about about it but if you're not i hit grabbing the attention even with with a hit, even with a, a with a movement, it's gonna be really hard to really like take off with the movement. So I feel like you, you putting in the work, doing the shows, connecting the dots, and being really like uh be being be really passionate about your work, it's gonna take you far. It's gonna take you far. Cause you're literally putting yourself around the people you wanna be like by doing the shows with the Tony Ayos, with the Peter Jacksons. You wanna be like these guys, you wanna be in that position. So you putting yourself in these rooms. So by by literally inspiring yourself to be to be where you want to be at, you know what I mean. So it's gonna it's gonna happen. I, I, obviously, the more the more work you do, the more the more people you surround yourself. Like eventually, like when the when the opportunity comes along, you're you're gonna be ready for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're not gonna be like a deer in headlights. Like, oh, what do I do? You just know. All right, facts. You're there. Cooking. Yeah, it's gonna cooking. come. You're investing. You're investing in yourself. So that's that's the thing I always tell a lot of artists. If you're not investing in yourself, I can't tell you what to do. You got to know, this is your passion. You got to know what, what move to make. You got to take these L's. You got to take an L then to know, okay, I took an L there. Let me evaluate the situation before I put myself in there. Let me know. Let me do my research first before I, before I invest in that. You got to know how to do these things. You know what I mean? Everybody's going to take L's. Like, you're not going to come into this game <laughs> acting like... Yeah. <laughs> Like, this is not an easy road by any chance, by any no, way. Like, it's not, it's not and I'd be a liar if I sat here in front of everybody in this camera and you yourself and said, like, there wasn't days where I said, like, fuck this. Like, I got finessed on a whole tour. Like, listen, we're not going to get too into it, but I went out of province to realize and learn at L, which was my lesson. Like, not everybody's legit. It's not every You got to get paperwork signed, you know, like, shit like that. Lives, it's a lesson. And that whole bus ride coming back to Ontario, I just sat there looking out the window like, I'm fucking done like i don't want to do this this is stupid and as yeah. soon as i hit home and i smelled the air i was like nah i can't give up like i got people yeah, you, can't. you can't you can't you can't it just like it's just your investment just got to make sense if you're investing something i would tell you for sure like you just did the tony Ayo shows like most of your investment right now as an artist because you got you got enough music out you're doing the shows you did the tour it's like you got to invest in getting the camera guy you need a cameraman that's gonna come into these, these shows with you because you because like Right now you did the show at Tony Yale, but you don't even have a recap video to post. We it. got a vlog coming. We have a little bit of a vlog coming for the people. A little bit. We got. We got a little. If you get the vlog, the vlog is dope and all, but you need to get a little recap of you performing to see the crowd reaction, just to get a couple of people's faces, just to have like just you having that little interaction with Tony Yale, because every every these little interaction is like it's like a snowball effect, just gonna like keep rolling. So if you just do shows just to do shows then your investment really like, you just literally just pain or do certain things just to do it. It's like, cause what you gotta do, how you gotta think about these investments is like you're investing just for the content. You know what I mean? Just to create content for your page, for your exactly. YouTube. That's what you're, you, it's like you're investing into a production. So yeah, yeah. think about like you paying for a production. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It's like your TV show, you paying to, to perform, uh, that's a that's your production. You you paying to just be around Tony Yeo. That's a production. You feel me? Yeah. So everything you got to do is a production. So your best investments, 
as an artist that's going to come up right now, I definitely advise you to get like a camera guy that you really rock with, that's really affordable to be around when you go into these shows, just have him pull up. You know what I mean? That's the, that's the we, next we had our to... boy, but like, is this nah, the thing bro. too? This I heard a rapper say, I don't remember who it was, and they were talking about security. And I understood it from that standpoint, but it's even about cameramen, everything. It's like, as much as we want to put on our friends, it's like you have to remember too, they're living their life. This isn't yeah. their job. So if now Tony Ayo's in the room and 50 bad bitches and we're all just bent off a bottle of Henny, like you can't expect this man to do a job that's not his. Uh, yeah, bro, yeah, bro. Right, 100%. Like, awesome. cameraman is essential. Essential. Essential, super essential. Because like, you have to see yourself. I'm trying to tell artists to compare themselves to a TV show and things like that. So every, so your page right now, Instagram, your Instagram page, your YouTube page is the is the network. You feel me? So every yeah. time you post a picture, that's like you giving a preview of whatever that's coming up, or you saying that, oh, I'm working on this, or you, I'm chilling this, or whatever. I mean, everything that you post is a preview of whatever you're going to drop. If it's either a tape, if it's either a song or video, even if you're going to do a show, when you post a flyer, you, you pretty much reviewing that you're going to do a show. That's yeah, yeah. still coming up. So when you do the show, you got to show people that you did the show. This is the production of the show that you did. So it's always good to have to do the production. So every investment that you do, if it's either like you going to a recording studio, you doing a show, you open up for an artist, you going on a tour, always have a camera person like that. That's got to be like your number one investment to just have a camera person that you pay. Even if you pay them a bill, 52 bills, content is what's really going to set you apart from everybody else that's just sitting at home not doing crap. You know what I mean? 100%, 100%. And that was that. like, that was what me and Jay sat down and we said like, what did we fuck up the most on? We said, yo, we need we need like a legit camera. Cause I'm just sitting there. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah, good, I'm sitting yeah. bed on the whole, whole, like whole ride home. Like how none of y'all pull out your fucking phones and record my like 20 something bars I just spit. I was just like. You see what I'm trying to show you, bro. That's what I'm, and you can't really just, feel, as much as you want to rely on a homie camera guy. Nah, bro. It's better to just, because the, the amount of money that you're investing into your career, it's best to invest that money into a camera guy that's that's reliable. Even if it's like a five bills of stock you're giving him to just to be around you wherever you go. That would, that, that would be the best advice I would give you as an artist that's going to come up. And I feel like once you make that investment, your career going to like, like you're going to see your career just scaling because you're doing work. You're doing the work. So it's just like you're not documenting the work. You're not doing the production of the work. You feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just but yeah, still facts, facts, facts. But what do you see your sound like evolving in the next uh, like couple of years? I definitely see me stepping a bit out of the bars and dumbing it down and, and trying to go make those records where I know, okay, we can spin this at the club. Like, let's start making records where, like, shorties are shaking ass at the strip club. Like, you know, we got to start getting more on that vibe. You know what I mean? And it, every That's artist has them. Every artist got to do it. It's not like, it's not like it's, as long as you still, like, can do it and be you, you're good. Facts. That's and the thing is, you, you don't always have to dumb it down to every record. You could do a one record where you dumb it down, where you could do the what what like I was just talking about. It's not even the the bars, the 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 verses that get the people. The verses could be on point. Your, your verses got bars, but it's the hook where you have to dumb it down. If you're out here doing bars in the hook, like bro, why are you doing bars in the hook? Nobody yeah. get, nobody's singing bars in the hook in the club. Nobody's singing bars in the, in the bar bars club. Bar, no, nah, bro, you don't gotta do bars in the hook. It's the hook that's gonna hook people up, bro. So it's just you just gotta dumb it down in the hook. That's that's pretty much that's pretty much what it is. That's yeah. pretty much all it is. Look at all the artists you name, you name, even if you name Grill Zelda, even one of their songs, if we go do or research, it might be like the hook that got the people hooked or whatever it may be. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So another question I have for you, like if you could change one thing about the music industry, like what what, what do you think you would change? I wouldn't even know where to start there because just already being where I'm in the music industry, there's so like such a shady business. I think it's just that maybe that alone, like I think I want, I can say about the Toronto music industry, yeah. the Toronto music industry. I wish we could all like pick one. We are we going to be professional artists or are we going to be yeah. outside of whatever we are? And it's like, that's the problem. I think with our music industry in Toronto and why it's not elevated where it should be. And I know it's going to fucking get to is because it's too much politics. It's that, too right. much outside noise. And it's like, 
I understand that some noise can't be silenced. I fully understand that, but there has to be a bridge somewhere where, you know, and I think I, I can say that the music industry in general, there's so much that needs to be changed and there's so much wrong with, and, but our, our industry that we, we could have, we're, we're like this, we're slowly getting up there and shaky. We could have went, woo. You just have to find a bridge and I understand not everything could always be bridged off, but apples or oranges pick one right so that's what i wish would change it's facts you're right i feel like the politics in the, in the industry and in the fact like it's a it's a dog eat dog world and in the crab in a bucket type of industry it's like the people will see you elevating they're trying to grab you down spread rumors about you it's kind of like really like what the hell so like you like you said it's got, that's one of the reasons why i kind of like stick to myself and stick wherever rock with me you know what i mean i'm not even trying to like go branch off and do bigger things because i realize it's just this industry is really like the bigger you get, the more hate you get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hundred percent. And the hate always comes from the people that used to love you the most. That's the scary part. That's, that's the scary part. That's it. Be the hate will come with people that you put in position at times. You break bread with, and it be like, and be like, what the? F-? It be people you like slept on floors with, and like most genuine hugs you felt it, and all of a sudden you come through and. That that feels that a little. That doesn't little... feel a little different. That and you're like, what did I do? I didn't do it's nothing. It's crazy. You start ass. questioning yourself. You start questioning yourself. You start questioning everything about yourself. So it's like you. No, you... like for me, at least I know when when I feel that that energy. I'm like, yo, I didn't do nothing. You. <laughs> I, I got off my ass and did something for myself. I'm sorry <laughs> that bothers you. Like, <laughs> how many people I say like, yo, jump, jump the, sh- they jump ship when it thought it was sinking. It's like, yo, y'all should have kept paddling because. Nah. You know what I mean. It's like. Nah. Fuck. And I think what, one thing I say about the industry is, well, as long as you got your business together, you got your, let's just say, you got your bank businesses together, your shit is registered, trademark and everything, you got your SOCAN, your warranties, your document paperwork on point, it's, it, it'll be hard for the business to kind of like shake you off your, 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 your ground, you know? That's one thing I tell to artists, like always make sure you register your music, even if it's with SOCAN, if it's like you got your codes, you do your splits right. And nobody, if you're doing, if you're gonna get into management, you got the right agreements and things and things like that in place. If you're gonna do licensing deals, you got the right agreement. If you can, if you don't understand the agreement, you get a lawyer to review it. As long as you get your agreements in point, on point. And if you if you don't want to do shows with other people, you do your own shows. Sometimes it's just like instead of trying to take the L with other people, it's best you do your own thing. Once you do your own thing, then you know you can take your L, and you gotta learn from that lesson and learn from moving forward. So it's kind of always best to kind of like invest within yourself as an artist, or even if it's like a creative in the business, invest within yourself. That way you don't have to deal with the headache that comes with the business. You know what I mean? 100%. The business, that's what I tell people like all the time. That's what I was saying earlier. You could tell who's who's having fun, living life, and kind of just riding off the clout and who's passionate about business. Because at the end of the day, like we are the business. Max, you are. Like I said, I'm not a yeah. businessman. I'm a businessman. Like, you know what you I'm saying? You are the business. Without no artists, it's no business. And that's why even me, I'm so big on like the health as well shit is because, well, yo, if we're the physical product and we're not healthy, like, the fuck are you going to do? You sure, you can do nothing. Like, you know there's no mean? label without artists. Yeah, <laughs> like you got to be healthy. You want to perform. You got to be at least in shape. You got to have some stamina to jump around on stage. It's not easy. You could get in the booth and spit the illest shit and one take it. You're not doing that performing. You're nah. not. I promise. Unless until you get to like certain levels, like certain people, let's say like Michael Jackson level, you're not, you're skipping a beat. It's, it's, it's hard. You know what I mean? It is. It's not hard. Well, yeah. I tell people, everyone, like, take care of yourself. Get in shape. Nah. Like, you see how Jada and Styles preach that health shit? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. For a reason. For a like, reason. Like, especially, especially Styles. Styles be out here doing like 100 pull ups. I'm, I'm fucking 50 years old. Like, no, that's what that's what got me into doing pull ups and like fucking uh, a bit better with Styles P. Like, straight up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Listen to what they're saying. I'm like, hey, this shit is it's not bullshit. You can Google it. You can read a book about it. This is real things that they're saying. You know what I mean? Facts. So, another question I have for you like, what, what, what's been your biggest accomplishments thus far as an artist? Definitely the award, the lyrics of the, the, the year. That was a big one. Yeah. I say every, I have three, three albums have been put out. One, we're trying to fight legally to get back on the streaming shits because there was, again, got to learn the game. A producer snaked me with some paperwork, but yeah. I feel like every album I drop is an accomplishment because I really put time into that. It's not just like, all right, it's not a, like, I don't treat it like a tape. I don't treat it like an EP. Like, Dead the Mumble Rap took two years. 
Like yeah. dropping that to me was like the biggest thing. And like I tell people, if you ever watched um the Biggie movie, whatever it's called, Notorious, yeah. when he was in the studio and he's like, I did it, I'm the greatest. And he just felt like that's how I felt when I dropped that album. So I feel like dropping, especially Death of Mumble Rap, my award. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say opening up for 28 was like an accomplishment. It, I guess it is, but it's like it was just kind of like a, a check mark or like um like a saving point. Like, okay, we're at this part of the game now. So it's like I can definitely say that means a lot. Um the double XL thing was crazy because like, man, you used to fucking try to steal the magazines. I was like, why you think I got that one right there? I showed you. I used to like up so left the fucking 7 Eleven. So that was a big thing to be like, again, the manifestation. Like I used to say, I'm gonna be in this magazine one day. And to open it up one morning and just see it, it was just like Shh. I'm clearly doing something right here. Like, you know, it's just that that assurance. So yeah, you you are, you are brother. Like I said, you are doing the work. You put you investing within yourself. Any art, artist that's investing into themselves is doing the work, you know, because yeah. nobody's gonna invest in you till you invest in yourself. No, nobody's gonna like, yo, you know what? I'm I want to pay you to 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 headline a show because yeah. I they seen you perform, they seen you investing into yourself. So somebody else is gonna want to invest in, in you. That's the reason why I invest in you because you've been doing your shows. You've been doing your things. Just like, okay, this guy putting money in, in himself. So now I, I now I'm comfortable to invest in you because yeah. you're doing the work that you're supposed to do. Because everybody's watching. Like, you feel me? Don't think like people are not watching. People are watching. Like, yeah. As much as they not follow you, they're watching. They're watching 100%. I see certain names all of a sudden pop up in a story. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, what up? Like, that's they're what's watching. up. Yeah, that's the thing, that's the thing people are they're watching the move. That's the thing. One thing I realized about society: people don't want to support you when you're at the bottom. But as soon as you're at the top, that's when they want to connect with you. They want to like do work with you, bro. From from <laughs> businessmen to your family, right, it's, to it's the women, bad. it's fucking nuts. I came home from tour, all of a sudden, Sir Shorty's hitting me up and saying, "I'm just like, man, what the fuck?" It's like, nuts. It's nuts. But it's nuts. people calling you, that's like, yo, cuz. I haven't heard from you in six years. You calling me like, yo, bro? Watch when you start doing production and taking pictures and videos of everything. Yeah, you're bro. Gonna, you got, you're, you're gonna see how different people treat you because once they start seeing you in different rooms, shaking hands with different people, putting out music with different people, you know, it's gonna be it, the same way you see family gonna see you different. That's the same way business people are gonna look at you different. So that's why I said like documenting everything, doing production of everything really matters because because. You're not documenting certain things really could stop you from getting a, a, a ten thousand dollar bag because you didn't document, you didn't do a production of it. You know what I mean? Not wrong, brother. You're not yeah, wrong. Yeah, bro. Even when you go to the recordings, even when you go to the studio, it's a production. So see everything that you do, it's a production. Even if it's like pictures, pictures see a production. Yeah. Pictures are just previews. Everything is a production. You feel me? Sure. And that's that. That's something I learned. And if the artist is gonna watch this to come get some advice off Brico, like. That's a big thing. Is like stop with this. I'm not paying. Oh, I don't pay to play. Like it's, called, it's to. called paying your dues. In Pay any dues. business, any organization, you're paying some way to be. That's what I said. This. Don't even look at it as like you're paying to perform. Don't look that's at it. Yeah. Like that's the thing people just keep. That's what keep thinking about. That's the thing I just be thinking. You're paying to perform. You're not paying to perform. You're paying for a production. You're yeah. paying for the stage. You're paying for the venue. You're paying for the security, so you're paying for your camera guy to get there to get close to the stage to get to get to get a to get a to get fans in front of you. You pay for a production. Yeah, hundred percent. So, that's the best way to look at it for real. That's the that's the only way you should look at it. Yeah. Now you have a production. So if you even if you do a vlog for that day and add a vlog, you put it on your YouTube that could get views. You could get ads up for that. Oh shit. Okay. Now you could do a recap to put on your Instagram. Now you could do a a before and after to post on your TikTok. You pay for production. Don't pay. Don't just thinking you pay to play. You pay for production. You pay to get access to 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 this person. I just say you pay five hundred dollars. You pay to get access to to this person that that's charged fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what I tell people too. Is like, yo, stop with that. I don't pay shit. And stop with nah, that, nah, like, bro. The mentality of somebody's gonna come help me. Like, no, nah, nobody's gonna, gonna go like this. Put their hand out and pick you up. You got to pay man. to be in those rooms, look those people in the eye and be like, what's up? Like, I'm here with you. And so, like you said, they could look at you like, oh, tell them, come here. My boy's doing something. We're going to we're going to work. You know what I mean? So but think about it. Would you rather pay a thousand dollars to open up uh, for Tony Yale or would you rather pay Tony Yale twenty thousand dollars <laughs> to, to <head? laughs> and you pay, I mean? pay five thousand for the venue, pay a thousand dollars for security, pay 
two thousand dollars for production and paid at least thirty thousand dollars to do a show. But like you, you, know, you gotta think about it. You don't the think. Thing too is like to the outside world, the people you want to look at you and be like, oh, and tap in. It's like <laughs> people don't. Think. You're gonna pay twenty bands, even say for a, a Tony Ayo feature, fifteen easily fifteen to twenty bands. Yeah, so, and, and you're not say like you, like I fucked up. I didn't got. I didn't get the picture, but. If you don't have a picture, like that thousand dollars to be in the room with the man, get the picture and hit him with the we working, like that's gonna get you <laughs> so much further than actually paying the 20 bands. Bro. Yeah, bro, is even, even the camera and the videos, the 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 you capturing the, the moment is worth more than the money that you pay. 100%. Like people gotta like people, it's just people like like are some certain artists have egos, they be thinking they're bigger than they actually is when they're not. Is that sometimes you have to see your value as an artist on the come up and where you at in your career. So if you're in your career, you know, like, oh, this is the amount of views that I'm getting. This is the amount of people that follow my page. This is the amount of streams I'm getting. Okay, this is this is the value I bring to the table. I could bring 100 people to the show if I'm on that, if I'm on, if I'm on that, 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 that open, open his list or whatever it may be. So it's like people got to know where they're at in their career and make, make these type of, uh, uh, are you called decisions? And if you don't want to pay, then don't pay. Nobody's ever forcing anybody to pay. No. You know what I mean? So what you did is the right thing. So-and-so making a bit more moves than you did. Don't say like, why the fuck did he, because nah. he got off his ass, took his harder money and said, I'm going to go invest. Yeah, 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 bro. You're making the right investment, fam. Don't ever think like, that's mm-hmm. why I said that's that, that's the main advice I would tell you as an artist. Every time you pay for a certain thing, it's like you're paying for production. You're paying for a license, like you licensing the stage. You are licensing the image of the person that you you gonna be around. You pay for the license. See, when a movie production happened, even if they on the street, let's just say they're on my street, they have to pay for that street. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have to pay to be in that street. They have to pay for a permit. So like it's like you pay for a permit to be in that to be in that surrounding wherever you're going to be at. So you, the more you, once you switch your mindset of things, then your mindset, then you're going to see things happening different for you. It's just, you you have to switch your mindset. Don't just pay just to pay. You yeah. have to pay for a reason. Exactly. You, have to have, you have to have a, some, you have to have a reason why you're paying, how you're going to get that investment back, which is production, you networking, you connecting with the fans, you getting new people to follow you. You have to think deep when it comes to this shit. You feel me? 100%, 100%. But yes, say less. So tell us a little bit more about your most recent release. Like, 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 tell us what's what what message you're trying to convey with that. What you I'm mean? working on? I'm working on the little little album project called Exordium. Exordium just means like the start of a new chapter, more or less. Because like I said, Death and Mumble Rap took two years. I feel like now let's get off this new. Like I'm a I'm a new artist. I got a different. I got a different. What are you going to call, hmm? call the tape? Exordium. Exordium. Why do you feel like you have to call that tape that? I just wanted, because my whole thing with it was like, I'm a big word guy, right? Like I do that word of the day and all that shit. So yeah. when I found that word and I found out what it meant, it stuck with me. Because my whole thing when I said I want to do a new album, I do not want a gimmick behind it. In a sense, like Death of Mumble Rap, not to say it was a gimmick, but it was um, it was a theme. It was a, it was, there was a plot to it, right? That was the plot. With this album, I just want to, I want to show my growth as a person and as an artist. Let's, like with this album, I don't want to worry so much about the bars. I really want to say something. I want to do some storytelling shit. I want to let people know, like, oh, this is this is what's been up, right? So that's why I, I know the word exordium when I when I found it in the in, in the book. I was like, oh, so this means like a, a new start, like a fresh start. I'm like, I like that because I just wanted this album to be like one word, kind of like like aggression, but like you know, I was like, no, I need a word that kind of hits, not hit like. Oh, and, I, and to me, I was like, that's intriguing. If I heard an artist I like, I, I'm going to Google that word right away. Like, what the fuck's that mean? Gotcha. Okay. You know what sure. I mean? But why so, do you feel like you have to put an album out, though? Or come you not dropping singles to build up the momentum to drop the album? We got a, we got a couple singles out already from the album. Okay. I got, um, we're doing brick mixes. So, like, tomorrow, noon, first one's dropping right on uh, streaming sites. So, the brick mix is just going to be whatever beats are hot. We're going over them. <laughs> And we're just gonna keep dropping those. Okay, that's the album's right. ready. Um, yeah, okay, that's all right. I, I, That's my thing. This is my next step. Like I said, after leaving the death of mumble rap shit, it's funny. Even though I jumped into an album, I said I gotta just jump more into singles. Singles for sure, and bro. More, and for more sure. of like, uh, like sure. the, the hooky, like the the hook catchy kind of like. Shit, bro. Facts, because you could drop singles 
and take these singles and put them in the album. You can take them off the streaming platforms and and take the codes and put them in the album you're going to drop. So I don't I ever feel like you should just drop album. Now you're just going to wait another year, wait a while and a bit. Nah, you could just keep dropping singles monthly. Even if you drop a single every month and you do videos, content for it, then you drop the tape. Take, take these songs and put them in the tape together. You know what I mean? Sometimes you, if you feel like you've been dropping albums and you feel like the traction, the attention that you're getting is not, is not what you wanted out of it. Sometimes you have to switch the, the you know, switch, switch the release, the marketing plans, even if it's just dropping a song every month, every two weeks, just to keep people hooked. And like you said, dropping the different beats. Do that. I feel like you have to do give content out. As much as you want to do shows and all, it's good to drop content and drop songs after songs. Get people hooked. Get people hooked to your music. Switch up the flow. You drop a, you drop a, let's just say you drop a dope ass lyrical song. You know what? Okay, I didn't see the reaction. Let me switch it up for a bit. Let me give, let me dumb it down. Let me, let me see what they fuck with this dumb down shit. Okay, they fuck with this dumb down hook. All right, let me get, let me give them another one. Or they fuck with this one. All right, shit, I'm gonna give them a couple of three dumb down. Oh, we got a great hooks and bars. Now I'm gonna put these dumb down songs on the tape with all lyrical shit. Sometimes you just have to switch it up because if you just give them the, the album, then you're just going to wait around and then then your page, which is your production, which is your network, is going to slow down. Because if you look at if you look at Netflix, once shows slow down, they don't have a next season, people, people lose interest. Yeah. I don't want to watch the next season if you're going to drop it two years later. I'm not even interested anymore. Facts, facts. facts. So you have to see your songs as kind of like a a episode of a season you feel me the season is the album you know yeah, so you, yeah, drop, yeah. you drop a song that's your that's your episode right there if you drop 10 songs now you have 10 episodes then your season is the album then you put it up together as the album which is the season or that's like season one or season two that's the next album you feel me yeah, yeah for sure for sure. You see it like that once you start seeing yourself more as like a, a tv show a, a network your page is the network then what you put in now is the entertainment and what you put in now is I capture people entertainment wise. Okay, great. This is how many views, streams that you're getting. Okay, now I'm 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 gonna go into the merch. Now I'm gonna, gonna go into doing a production, which is like you're doing a uh as you say, you start a record label, you start your own studio recording studio. It's like once you start putting your mindset as like entertainment, this is what you do. You're entertaining people, your mindset gonna change, fam. Your whole the way you're gonna view things, the way you release your music. It's gonna be completely changed. Don't think it's just like you're just an artist. No, you you're an entertainer. You're entertaining people, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> man. You're entertaining people. Once you see it like that, then everything, everything that you do is gonna be different. You once you pay for shows, you know. Oh, I'm about to do a production. I got a show. I gotta do a vlog. I gotta do. I gotta do behind the scene footage. Percent, <laughs> bro. You feel me? You gotta do behind the scene footage. You gotta see the preview. You gotta show the outfits. You know what I like? Like me, I'm cool. Like I'm, I'm charismatic. Like I'm cool with doing that yeah. shit. Like, you have to do it, bro. You have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah bro. Man. Like I'm, I'm comfortable. I learned a long time ago to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah, bro. Tapping, tapping into your entertainment bag. That's one thing I, I, I tell you as an artist. Get into your entertainment bag, guys, because that's what you are. You yeah. feel me? One hundred percent. But yeah, so I'm not gonna hold you too long. I got a couple more questions for you before I let you go. Right. Uh. Yeah. So, like, what advice would you like to share with your supporters to keep going and how to stay positive? So, make sure, honestly, you just have the right people in your circle. Like I was saying earlier in this interview, like, we past fucking month, we were just dealing with nonsense, bullshit, everything. And, like, I had to step away to deal with shit. And Jay, thank God I have Jay Young in my circle. He held the business down for me, you know? And then when Brickle came back, now it's like, all right, that's what brothers do. We're both back full force. So, uh Make sure you got good people in your circle, man. Like it's like it's like my it's like my engineer stick. Like that's a day day one sandbox thing. And thank God we've always been in each other's circle, and we'll never turn our backs. But you know I've let the wrong people in my circle, and it's almost went poof, sank the ship. So make sure you got the right people in your circle. Earlier, like we were saying, never be afraid to ask for like receipts, paperwork. Like wow. if you're especially you're, you're investing money, you're paying wow. for a beat, you're leasing a beat. I know that I mean, you might not know the words. Try to read it and understand it because I lost my first album pretty much. I'm just fighting to get it back on streaming sites because you got to read. So make sure you ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask the questions. Have the good people around you. Have good energy around you. Take care of yourself physically. 
that's right. that's the best I could say. And, and don't don't that's turn your back on your creativity and your your crap. Like there's we all go through a day, maybe days, weeks, where we're just like it's not there, it's not there. But don't turn your back on it. There's like that I forget what movie it was like a whole Morgan Freeman speech about like you do what you are. Like you know, the minute you turn your back on that, like you're kind of fucked. So it's like. Ah, right, so, so yo, that's some dope ass advice. That's some dope. But what advice would you give to your younger self? Like <laughs> a lot, but I guess music wise, just like chase that goal. Things are not as far as you think it is. Like, you know, I used to think like yo, Tony Ayo, like I used to sit with my headphones on, listen to Gina albums all day. Never thought I'd be in the man's face to rap on bars. Like that's hard. That's I used hard. to think, yo, that shit was so far away. It's like a whole different universe. Nope. Make that your universe. Make that shit your reality. Manifestation right. is real. You but you have to work for it. You can't, you're not, I'm not Professor X. I didn't sit here and think it and it came to me. I I took L's. I took losses. I invested money. I've I've lost people, like I've lost relationships due to the lifestyle I want to live. Everything you have to sacrifice. And it's true. You definitely right, bro. Definitely right. Everything you say right now is just straight facts. It's just a lot of sacrifice. You have to manifest a lot of things. You have to put in the work. You have to worry about your physical health, your mental health, yeah. <laughs> like all these it's things. Mental, like, all that, man. It's all real. Like mental health shit is real. So I tell people all the time, like, take a minute too. Like if 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 you if it's overwhelming, take a minute, breathe. Like it. Facts. You know, take your time without wasting time. Yeah, hey, bars. You know, bars. That's, shout out, that's Don Trip. That's not me. That's Don Trip. Shout out Don Trip. But take your time without wasting time. Like, oh, you said that, huh? You said Pardon? that. Who said that? Don Trip. Don Trip. Don Trip. He's from Memphis. He said, "Take your time without wasting time." That's yeah. Hard. Yeah. That's Don hard. Don Trip and Starlito. If you guys don't know who those guys are, they're fucking Trip and Starlito are like the Southern Jada and uh SP. It's crazy, bro. Say less, bro. Say oh, less. This was, dope interview. this was a dope interview. I got to know you a little bit better. We got to share some advice, some tips for the musicians that's out there that's going to be watching this interview. So let the people know where they could connect with you, what you got coming up next, uh, what music or song you got dropping, and how they could, like, you know, hit you up and build with you. Every streaming site, wherever you stream or download music, YouTube, it's just Joey Brick. All social medias, the, everything, it's Joey Brick 416. Like I said, we got, we're about to go on, me and Jay Young are about to go on tour with Ready Rock D in March, March 4th and 5th. Um, shout out Ready Rock. He's another big artist from Yonkers doing his thing. He's worldwide. Um, April and May, we're going to be doing a little, we're gonna be on tour with Mad Child for a bit, opening for him. Shout out Mad Child. Um, like I said, I got the album Exordium coming and it's to the point like every, every week or every other week, you're going to see something. You might see a video, you might see a, a freestyle, a track. Yeah, me and Jay Young, we got a three uh three track EP for you guys at the end of the month. So it's a lot of work. Dope, coming, dope, dope, dope. Yeah, man, I, I like that, man. I like that you you stay consistent, you working, you put in the work, you're networking, you're not scared to invest in yourself, you're learning about the industry as you go, but you're making the right decisions for yourself, which I respect. And that's like I said, that's why like guys like myself are investing in you and other guys that's probably watching, that's probably gonna be watching this interview or watching you. They're going to be investing in you along the way as well. If it's rather doing giving you a feature or even paying you for a show, paying you for a verse, I feel like the time is coming where you're going to be charging for verses, charging for shows, charging a thousand, ten. Oh, I already charged for verses, bro. I already, I said, said, like, if I it's said. not, if we don't hit each other that's up, good. I'm like, I got you. That's good. That's good. That's good. You that's hit good. me up and I don't know you like that. I'm Yo, Yo, that's good, bro. Yo, bro, you at that point, you did, the, you, you paid your dues. You paid your dues, so you at the point where you got to charge for it, I'm bro. not you even talking charge. shit no more, like. No, no, you paid your dues. Because of the award, because of co-headlining shit, because of now the 28 year shit, like, yeah, I did, I paid, I, I've had paid features in the past, and my old price when I came out the game humbly, I was like, 100 bucks for a burst. I feel like that's fair. I cut my engineer a little bread. I walk right. home with some bread. Not no more. You gotta have a few. You gotta like have a few yeah. hundred dollars at me now. Like this is what yeah, it there is. There you go. Like, yeah, yeah. You put in the work. And like I said, I, you put in the work. You paid your dues. So it's like you have to like get the fruit of your labor. That's that's pretty much what it is. Exactly what it is. That's pretty brother. much what it is. Exactly. But yeah, man, I appreciate you I doing appreciate this. Appreciate you, brother, for real. Yeah, for we're real. gonna keep rocking. Make sure you guys check him out on all streaming platforms. Joey Brick. Follow him on all social media platforms as well. He got a couple shows coming up. Check out his shows. You already know what it is, man. It's your boy. Holla at your boy, man. Don't Easy. be afraid to tap in. Don't be. I, I message back. Don't be afraid to tap in. Ask questions. I got you guys. Shout All out right. next, man. All right. See you last. Easy, bro. Two, one, two. All right.